What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and today we're going to be taking a look into FreeJS. Now FreeJS is a 3D library for JavaScript. It allows you to basically work with 3D uh, to create cool backgrounds, to create games, to create a whole bunch of cool stuff in 3D. You can see there's loads of different things here, examples. Head over to FreeJS.org and check a few of these out if you want to actually um, see what they are and how to use them. We're going to just get straight into it. I'm going to show how to use it, what you can do with it, and basically getting started with FreeJS. So let's switch over to our code and get started. So I've just got a folder here called Getting Started. And the first thing I'm going to do is basically create a new feet or fight project. So I'm just going to say npm create feet at latest now if you don't know this syntax what i'm doing here i highly suggest you look into node.js and the npm package the node package manager um this will hopefully help you understand what's going on here. but all we're doing is we've been, i've got node.js installed on my machine and i'm just going to run this command to create us a new project now if i just hit enter this is going to give us a name we're just gonna i'm just gonna put dots that just gonna create it in its current um folder i'm then gonna hit vanilla javascript and there you go you can see it's now created everything we need here um i then want to run npm install and we're going to say free to install free js um as a dependency in this now that's been installed let's just clear this um and we can actually just go in here and tidy up a little so you can see we've got a bunch of different files here now i'm just going to delete counter.js because we don't need it i'm going to go into index.html i'm going to remove the app here and i'm just going to title this free js um and the rest of this can just stay as it is so i'm just going to close that file for now in our main.js, I want to remove everything but the style.css import. And then inside of styles, I just want to remove everything and pass in margin zero. Change this to CSS. Uh, padding zero and box sizing for the box. I'll just remove any sort of um, padding on anything. We then want to go to HTML or body and just remove the um, overflow. So we want to say overflow hidden. That'll stop anything from overflowing. And if we get any issues, we can come back and tweak this. So there you go. So this is basically what we need. Now, if we go into package, you'll see we've got some scripts we can run. What we want to run is the def. Um, so just to get started, let's just see if put a h1 here and just say test um, and then just run npm run def to actually run the def server if we open this you can see we just get this test on screen if we press f12 you can see we don't get any errors in the console log which is a good thing um everything seems to be working as it should so let's close the console for now let's close this let's bring this down to the side dock it next to our code here bring this in um we can actually just keep these two files on top close that and we can close our terminal as well so we can remove this test from the page um, and let's just go into main.js now so let's get started creating our first scene now the first thing we want to do is we want to import um, everything as free from free this is just going to import everything we need um, from the free package as free so we can just run free dot scene free dot whatever we want um, and that will work nicely so uh, a web a um a scene as such is split up into multiple parts now you have the scene itself um so we're going to say scene um we also have the camera and then we also have objects in that scene you could also have lights um and many other things as well and finally we'll need a renderer to actually render things out we may need a loop to actually animate stuff as well later on. So these are the things we're gonna be focusing on today. So let's start off with creating a scene. First thing I wanna do is say scene is equal to a new free dot scene inside of here. We can then create our camera. So everything we do in our scene, we will actually be um, passing basically through. So we'll get a scene and everything will be put into this scene. We actually have to add it manually um so i'll show you what i mean by that soon so next thing we want to create our camera which is going to be equal to a new 
free dot perspective camera. Now there's multiple cameras, you've got orthographic as well, um, but perspective is probably the one you'll use most. So we can now do a perspective camera. Now you can give this an FOV. I'm just gonna give it something like 75 or maybe even uh, 80. Uh, you can higher or lower this. The higher it is, the more distortion you're gonna get on the edges. So just watch out for that. Um, but the more you'll be able to see, so you'll feel the few. We then want to give this an aspect ratio. Now let's actually create some options up here. Um, and what we're going to do is create a const options and set this equal to have a width, which will be window.inner width, and a height, which will be window.inner height. This just gets us the height and the width. And in here, we need to give it the aspect ratio, which is the width divided by the height. So we're going to say options.width divided by options.height. And that's going to give us this whole screen as our camera space. We then want to say um, our clipping plane. So this is how close we can get to something before it disappears. So we're going to say 0 0.1, and I'm just going to put a 1,000 as the far plane. So this is how far we can get away from something before it also clips. We then want to create our objects, which is going to basically be a cube to start off. So we're going to create a cube. Um, let's just say cube. And in here, we're going to say cube geometry. <laughs> and then inside of this, also, there's no R there, it's just geometry. Um, we're going to say a new free dot box geometry, which we can then pass in the width, height, and depth of the box. So I'm just going to set it to 2, 2, and 2. We can then pass in a material. So a cube needs a material. That'll be the color, the glossiness, how much it glows or whatnot of your object. So we're going to say free dot mesh basic material. Now there's other materials you can look at, but this is, as it says, the basic material. And the only thing we really need to pass in is a color. So the color we're going to go for is, let's say, uh a you know let's just write in a let's just write in crimson i don't know if that's going to work i normally only work with hex codes but we're going to try seeing if it'll allow us to pass in crimson we'll see if this errors later on down the line we're then going to pass in a new well now we're actually going to create our cube object so i'm just going to call this cube object obj uh and i'm just going to say free dot mesh and the mesh is going to be made up of the cube geometry and the material. I'm just going to rename this to cube material because uh, if later on we want to add more to this, this will be helpful. And then we can add this to our scene. So we're going to say scene add cube. Now one thing you, oh sorry, that should be cube object. Um, one thing we need to take note of in here is our cube itself um, is going to render in the scene, but our camera it's going to be at the same position as our cube because everything will, when you add it to the scene, you're going to add it at the position of 0, 0, 0 in a 3D space. So we want to set our camera C plane to be further away from the actual object. So we're going to say camera dot position dot C is equal to, and I'm just going to pull it as 10 for now. That should move it far enough away that we can see the cube. Now we've got our cube. We're going to want to add in potentially some light um, and also uh, the renderer. Let's start off with the renderer. So under renderer, we want to say const renderer is equal to a new free dot web gl renderer, just like that. We can then say renderer dot set size and the size we want it to be is the window.width. So we can say options.width and options.height to actually set our um, width and height, which is going to be the same size as the screen we have. Then once we've got our renderer set, we need to add it to the document. So what we could do is go document.body.append child. So it's going to add it into the document as it is. And we're going to say renderer dot dom element now finally to actually render it we need to say renderer dot render and now we need to pass it in our scene and the camera we want to render 
And there you go. You can see we have our cube in the middle. Now you can see this isn't actually looks 3D. It looks basically a square 2D. That's because we're actually looking at this dead on. If we move the camera up slice, we can say camera.position.y is equal to 2. And hit save. You can see we can start seeing the edge of the top of this box. You can see where the cube is changing. But you can't really see much about it because there's no lighting data in here. There's no light coming in, which means we can't actually see anything. Like we're just getting plain lighting data. So let's remove the Y. Let's add some rotation to our cube. So let's just go to our cube um, and just say cube object dot rotation. Oh, if I can spell rotation dot X is equal to 15 uh, and cube object dot rotation dot y is equal to 30. And there you go. You can see it's kind of looking like that. You can see there's a jagged edge, but I'll show you how to fix that and make that a bit more clearer later on. Okay, now before we add a light to our scene, the basic material doesn't actually interact with lights. That's why you can currently see it now, because there's no lights in our scene, but we can see this very brightly. We need to actually switch to using the mesh standard material, which now you can see it's currently not visible. That's because it is there, but it's too dark to see. And this is where we can start by adding lights to our scene. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a, um, a directional light, which we're going to set as a new three dot directional light, which we can pass in the color, which we want to be white. So we'll just say zero X F F F F F F. And then we can pass in the intensity of that light. Let's start off with saying like 0 0.5. Um, and then we want to say scene.add directional light. Hit save. And there you go. You can see the top of it, but not the sides because the light is hitting it from this angle. Let's change the rotation back to 0 for now. And there you go. You can see it's now completely invisible. Now, the current light is actually hitting it from directly above down. So if we move the camera up again like we did earlier, so by saying camera.position.y is equal to 2, we should just see the top of the cube. Now, what we want to do is have this light coming from a different position. So let's just say directional light.position.set is equal to 10. Um, directional light dot position dot y is equal to 10. And there you go. You can see it's kind of coming in from the front. Now we want to say directional light dot position dot x is also equal to 10. We're just going to move it over to the side here. Now let's turn the intensity up to 1. So you can see a bit more. And let's rotate the cube a little. So let's bring this back to uh, 15 and 30. So you can see the cube is rotating. You can see the light is hitting it really hard here but not so much on the front and the back. And that's where you can see that. But this, this cube is cool and all, but it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of boring. Let's also move the camera back down to zero. Then we'll rotate the cube object dot rotation uh, dot set is also equal to 15. There we go. 45 seems to be a good angle for this. You can see the lights hitting it from up here. Not so much on the front, but on the side as well. But let's actually make this cube rotate on its own. So without doing all of this, Let's remove that and let's actually create a loop for our, our renderer. So in here, we want to create a function. I'm just going to call this the animate property. You can call this whatever you want. Um, and in here, we're just going to say request animation frame. And we're going to call the function here. We then want to say cube object dot rotation dot x is plus equal to 0 0.01 now we can actually remove rem yeah, move our renderer dot render into our loop here and we should hopefully oh we need to call animate once and there you go you can now see we have a rotating cube on our screen now we can make this slower by just adding an extra zero in there um and there you go you can see it's a lot slower you can see we get these really jaggedy lines though so we can fix these lines by going to our renderer and saying renderer dot set pixel ratio 
and we can set this to sound like two instead of one. Oh, and you'll see the jaggedy lines are now gone and it's a lot smoother. If we put this to 0.5, you can see it's much more pixelated. You can get this cool pixely effect of this zone you want. Um, you can go even worse if you want and you can have this sort of real blurred pixel effect. Um, which actually could work for a lot of things. Then you have one, which is the default with the slight jaggedy lines. And if you set it to two, that's two times the pixel density. And you can see it there. If you set it to something like four, it's going to be super smooth. But you're probably going to have a lot of um, a lot of issues with uh, performance later on. And there you go. So you can see how cool that's already looking with the cube. So now what happens if we want to add a second cube to our game? Well, that's kind of easy. What we can do is we can take the cube object, like we've done here, add a new one and call it cube two. And we could give the cube two a different position. So we're going to say cube two dot position dot y and we're going to set this one to three and you can see we have another cube at the top now let's also change the material so let's copy this material and call this the cube material two and we're going to set this to a blue um and call this cube material two and you can see we now got a blue cube as well now let's actually go and animate this and we can bring this in here and just basically copy this and just change these to two and let's set this to negative one. And you can see we've got two different rotating cubes that are going at with things. You can see they kind of clip a little, which is fine. But now we've got two different cubes doing a rotation. We can also move their position as well. So for cube one, let's just move it down as it goes. So cube object dot position dot y is minus equal to 0 0.01. And now it should slowly move down. Maybe we should go one more up. And you can see it is slowly moving further and further down. Like it's kind of falling. You kind of add gravity to it if you wanted. And you can see it's just forever falling down, down, down. And gone. Go well, going. And there you go. You can see that's a kind of cool way to go about it. So there you go. You've now got two cubes floating in space. Now that's going to be it for the first tutorial on this. Let me know if you enjoyed this sort of video. If you want to see more about FreeJS and creating cool backgrounds and stuff like that. If you want me to go into more depth or anything like that, please let me know down in the comments down below. And I can turn this into a series to teach you how to create a bunch of different things. Um, even VR if you really wanted to. How we can use FreeJS to create VR experiences. Let me know down below in the uh comment section and i will see you in the next video for now peace out